Okay, welcome back. This lesson is all about creating your own custom scrapbooks in layout. Obviously, you could just work with the scrapbooks that come with layout, like we talked about in the previous lesson, and you could modify them and build on them, etc. But at some point, you're going to want to build your own custom scrapbook. So let's look at how we do that from scratch. The process of creating a new scrapbook is pretty much the same as creating a new layout document. The only difference is that when you come to save it, you simply go to File, Save as Scrapbook. Okay, we'll get to that in a little while. As long as you've got the file in your scrapbooks folder, you'll be able to access it in this scrapbooks panel. My other tip here is that when you go for when you create a new scrapbook, you want a kind of square ratio of paper and a fairly small size. It looks better in the scrapbooks panel and it keeps things simple. So let's go to file, new. And for now, let's just select an A4 portrait blank sheet. Okay, so if we just stretch this out and we can redock my scrapbooks panel over here okay so we just need to modify this paper size to get started so let's go to file document setup paper and let's just change this to 200 by 200 which is kind of a good size and go to close okay so there's just a, a page in our new scrapbook bear in mind like I said before, the smaller the paper size, the larger the contents will appear in the scrapbook window. So if you plan on creating a lot of kind of fiddly small call outs and things, then a smaller paper size will make it far easier to work with later on. Another tip is to add some small text or notes to identify what things are, but we can talk about that later on. Okay, before we start adding any content, I like to get the layers set up in my scrapbook. I like to have a separate layer for the scrapbook items, another layer for notes and things I might use to explain what the items are. For that layer, I don't wanna bring that into my layout document. Let's first of all, delete this on every page layer because we don't need that. And let's add a new layer and call that symbols. For this layer, which we already have, let's for now just call that background. Don't worry, you can assign different layers to things once you've dropped them into your layout sheets later. This is just for in our scrapbooks. Okay, so let's quickly save this before we get started. File, save our scrapbook, and then just choose your default folder, which will be the top one. Just quickly on that, if we go to layout preferences and go to folders, in here, is where all of your various resources for layout are saved. So where your templates are saved, where your scrapbooks are saved, etc. And these are generally the default locations. So if you ever need to find that folder to add something to it, this is where you look for the file. Also, if you wanna use a different folder than the default one, for example, if you want to use a shared folder that might be on a server or in the cloud somewhere, you can add another location. So if you wanted to save your scrapbook, say onto Dropbox, you would select this plus symbol here and it would add it in here. And then whatever was in that location would also appear in your scrapbooks dialog box. Okay, now to add the content. As before, when we create the title block, there's two ways we can do this. If like me, you're coming from an AutoCAD background, then you'll also probably have spent years building up a library of 2D CAD blocks for everything from furniture to structural steel profiles, you name it. Well, don't worry, you don't have to throw all that work away. What we can do is just add them the same way we did with the title block by importing them into our scrapbooks. So let's call this first page in our scrapbook, bedroom furniture. And let's drop something in. Go to file, insert, and we can choose this double bed block that I've got here, okay? Now again, it'll ask us if you want paper space or model space, that will depend on how your CAD stuff is set up, but from my experience, it's almost always model space only, and all of mine I know are set up that way. So let's just import that. Now, here it is. So you'll notice it's quite large, and again, like we did before, this little number here, you can see in the brackets, this is the scale that it came in at. And we're currently at 
1 to 11.9, which as we know is not a standard scale. So for the purposes of this, I want to right click on the object, go to scale, and let's set that at 1 to 100. Okay, so now you see it looks a bit more usable. I also want to rotate this. So if you hover over uh, objects in layout, groups and objects in layout, you'll see you get these little icons that pop up. This one allows you to move the center point of the object. And this little arm allows you to rotate it from that center point. Okay, this is useful as well if you want to align things with something else, but we can talk about that later on. For me, I just like to have a bed that looks like that. And I'm gonna just place it on the page. So that now we've got an object that we can drag and drop into layout. You can modify this if you like. So for example, if we double click to open it, we open up our shape style. We can give that a fill, for example. We could give it a slight color if we wanted to. It's entirely up to you, okay? And then likewise, if you wanna make a copy of that, it's simply, you'll get the navigation symbol if you hover over it, you drag it down, hold down option or control if you're on a PC to create a copy put down here and I might want to, to make things easier I might want to right click and set this to 1 to 50 okay so then if I'm working on a 1 to 50 drawing I can take this one if I'm working on a 1 to 100 drawing I can take this one both of these objects I want to be on my symbols layer so I'll select them move to layer symbols okay and I want to just give myself a little prompt so that I know what they are later on. So what I'm going to do is take this text tool up here, add a text box, and that is 1 to 100 double bed. Okay, and, I'll, and I will just make a copy of that and call this obviously one to 50 double bed. Each of these text elements, I can then right click, move to layer background. What that allows me to do is I can then lock that layer, the background layer, so that when I open my scrapbook later, the only things that I can select and drag and drop will be these symbols. The text won't come in with it. These are just prompts for me so that I know what I'm looking at just to speed things up. Okay, let's repeat this for a few more bedroom furniture items. I'll do it, you have a go on your, on your own and I'll see you in a moment's time. Okay, fast forward a few minutes and here I have a better looking page for my scrapbook of bedroom furniture. I've got different size beds from single up to king size and I've got them both at one to 100 and one to 50. So when I'm populating my drawings later on, I can simply drag and drop these items and rotate them as needed. So all I have to do now is just save this scrapbook. Um, so let's go to file, save a scrapbook, and let's just call that Scala Furniture. Okay, and uh, in the same way that we can add pages to a layout document, we can add pages to a scrapbook by using the plus symbol over here. For example, we might have lounge, furniture, and we might have kitchen, we might have dining room, furniture. You get the idea. If we now go back to our title sheet that we had before, if we look in our um, scrapbooks dialog, Let's just drag this back out here again. If I now go to this drop down menu, I should be able to see Scala furniture. Here are all my beds. I can drag them in, I can rotate them as much as I want. You'll also notice that the text items are locked so that I don't inadvertently drag those in. If you don't have a pre existing library of 2D CAD blocks, don't panic. You can simply draw what you need using the layout drafting tools. Let's do a few of those in the next lesson. See you there.